In my last video, I developed a flowchart for accrual adjusting entries. What I want to do now is do at least five examples of what applying this flowchart looks like. Similar to the prepayments, I'm going to use the exact same company, Pink Inc., a wholesaler who sells products to retailers. Now, we have to read the directions because they're slightly different. We have to provide the adjusting entry for each scenario as well as a subsequent cash transaction in the next period. The company has a December 31st year end, now we know what date we're standing in, and they record adjusting entries annually, that helps us determine the amount, and they use the balance sheet method. Number one, the business borrowed $40,000 from the bank on June 1st for five years at an interest rate of 5%. Interest is payable on the first day of every month. Interest was last paid on December 1st, 2020. Whenever we are calculating interest, we always want to stand in the date. Let's just show this. We're looking at December 2020, and trust me, this is exactly what December 2020 will look like. We notice that we are right now standing in December 31st. Whenever we are calculating interest, pretend that you are actually physically standing in December 31st. Look over your shoulder to see when was the last time you paid interest. The last time we paid interest was December 1st. Therefore, we have to accrue or recognize the cost of borrowing somebody else's money from December 1st to December 31st. 31 days, one month. So remember, when we're dealing with interest, we stand in the date, December 31st. Look over your shoulder to the last time you paid interest. Accrue interest from that date, the last time you paid, to the date you're standing in. In this case, 31 days. Remember, for accrual adjusting entries, we only need to provide the adjusting entry at period end plus the subsequent cash transaction. Therefore, the actual taking out of the loan on June 1st, I don't have to record. I'm going to because I find it helpful, but it's absolutely not necessary. What did we get? Cold hard cash. $40,000. What did we give away? Well, we gave away an IOU to the bank, promising to pay them in the future. Bank loan payable, 40000 Now, we have to calculate what was the cost of using somebody else's money for the last 31 days. Now, depending on your instructor, you might have to calculate the interest for the exact number of days, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to calculate the interest for one month. $40,000 multiplied times the interest rate divided by 12 months times the one month that I have to accrue for. And that equals $166.67. That is the amount of interest that we owe on December 31st for having the use of somebody else's money for a whole month. So we have to do the adjusting entry on December 31st. What did we get? Well, we got to borrow somebody else's money. We got the use of somebody else's money to help generate revenue. That's an expense, interest expense. Interest expense is basically rent for using somebody else's money, $166.67. What did we give away? Well, we gave away a promise to the bank to pay them in the future. Interest payable. $166.67. Now remember, this is the adjusting entry, an accrued expense adjusting entry. I know this because we're using a debit to the expense account. So at December 31st, what would we report on the statement of financial position? We would show a current liability. Interest payable, $166.67. On the income statement, we would show a financing expense. Interest expense, 166.67. That's what would be reported at December 31st on the financial statements. Now, remember, we also have to show the subsequent cash transaction. So fast forward into the new period. We're at January 1st. On January 1st, we actually have to pay the bank the $166.67. So what do we get? Well, we get back our IOU, the promise that we made to the bank to pay them in the future. 
we no longer owe them the $166.67. What do we give away? Well, we give away cash. $166.67. Let's quickly look at what happened at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, interest payable was sitting at $166.67. But the interest expense was sitting at zero. That's because interest expense would have been closed to retained earnings at the end of the year, so the opening balance of interest expense on the income statement would be zero. Now, we make the payment on January 1st. What happens? Interest payable goes down to zero because we no longer owe anybody anything. But interest expense does not change. That's because the use of the money occurred last period, in December. What else would have happened? Cash would have declined by 166.67. So, the subsequent cash transaction affects only the statement of financial position. It has no impact whatsoever on the income statement because we did not use, consume, or incur anything this period. Did we follow our accrual flowchart? Accrued expenses. The business records a new piece of information at the end of the year. Debit the expense, credit the liability. That's exactly what we did. We debited interest expense, credited interest payable. The company then pays their suppliers in the next period. Well, the supplier was the bank because they supplied us with cash to use. So that would be a debit to the interest payable and a credit to cash. Followed the flow chart perfectly. Accrued expense adjusting entry for interest.